Hi everyone, my name is Zoe Noble and today I'm going to run through my colour grading process using luminosity masks in Photoshop CC. I'm going to use a photo from one of my beauty editorials which was published in Atlas magazine. It also won first place in a retouching competition that was focused on colour so I thought this would be a great example to use. Here is the folder with the colour grading in so I'm going to delete that now and you can see just how much of an impact that has on my image. I've already retouched the image as well, so here is the original before I did anything to it. Here is with my retouching. So now I'm ready to colour grade. So what are luminosity masks? They're basically a selection tool. They allow us to make a selection based on how bright or dark an area in an image is. They're quite complicated though to make, so I've created a Photoshop action that you can just download and it will create all the masks for you. Just click on the link below in the description and once you've loaded that action into Photoshop, head over to the action palette and you'll see a folder called Luminosity Masks in there. In this folder, you have actions that are gonna create these Luminosity Masks for you. So you need to select the lights, the darks, and the mid-tones all together, and then you press play. Now, if you go up to your channels palette, this is where the luminosity masks will live. If you start clicking through the channels, you can see that the action has created different selections of the lighter areas in your image, the darker areas, as well as the mid-tones. So the black areas are going to be your selection. I'm going to start with the darks. So I'm going to look through, start clicking, and see which selection is going to work um, for what I want to do. I know I want to affect the hair and the shadows, um, so I'm looking for a, a, a selection which is going to do that. This one is probably catching too much of her skin around here, so I think I'm going to go with dark three. So to make that selection, you can either press command and select on that channel, or you can just press the little selection button down the bottom. Now I wanna go into my adjustments window and just choose the curves adjustment from here. Now I have a selection and a curves adjustment attached to that selection. The red is just a visual of the mask. So to get rid of that, you can just click on this icon here or you can rename that layer. With this curve, you can adjust different areas in the image's tonal range. For an RGB image, the upper right area of the graph represents the highlights, and the lower left represents the shadows. So as you add points to the line and move them, the shape of the curve changes. The steeper the sections of the curve represent areas of higher contrast, while flatter sections are the areas with the lower contrast. So if I pull the curve up, and down to create a really strong S shape, then there is a lot of contrast going on in the selection. So I'm gonna remove those control points because I want to start with the color. So I'm gonna come up to this drop down here and I'm gonna select one of the colors that I want to begin with. I'll start with the red. Now if I pull this curve upwards, it's gonna be adding more red and it's only gonna be affecting the area in my mask. So at this point, it's the shadows. So you can see if I pull down, it's darkening and it's reducing the red. I always try and have a game plan before I come into Photoshop with what I wanna do with the colors. So I know I wanna add more red into her hair. You know, this shoot is all about warrior women. So I wanna get those red warm tones in the shadows and maybe some complementary colors of cooler tones in the highlights. So it saves me time in the long run if I have a plan. So I'm just gonna move these control points around until I'm happy with what I'm seeing. And then I'll move on to another color. So now I'm gonna select the green and I'm gonna add a few control points and again, just start moving things. So. Already I can see I, I, like, I like this when it's warmer. So from there, I'm gonna to start to finesse this. Um, I don't want it to be so extreme, so I'm just gonna keep tweaking, um, maybe move the bottom control point. Um, you can see it's, it's more intense when I move it to the right. 
and it's lifting the shadows and adding green to the left. So I'm liking the redder tones. Now I'm going to go into the blue and let's see if I pull this down. It's warming it. It's warming it more, which I'm liking. So maybe I'm going to leave it around there. And then I'm going to see what, what happens with the, the shadow end of the histogram. So I'm going to lift this up and you can see that's fading. That's fading the shadows and it's also adding more blue in there. So I'm liking that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I can also play with the opacity and lessen the effect that I've created. So it's not so intense. So maybe somewhere around 70, 80%. Yeah, something like that. Just so it's, you know, it's more subtle. Less is more. Now I'm going to rename this layer so everything is nice and organized and I know exactly what selection that was. I think it was Doc 3. Yeah. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit more depth to the model's face. So I'm going to look for a selection that also has the shadows in the hair, but also the shadows on her face. So I think this is a good one. Um, it's got this shadow here and on her neck. Um, so I'm going to select this one and add a curves adjustment to that selection. And I'm going to rename it to keep everything nice and organized. And now I'm just going to pull this curve down, which is just going to darken that selection. So you can see that it's kind of giving a bit more of a 3D feel. It's, it's kind of giving more contrast to the image. Um, so I, I'm liking that. I'm going to see what I can do with the color now. Uh, I'm just going to choose choose green and let's just see. I'm going to mess around with this control point. Yeah, I think pulling it down is, is kind of creating this nice warmth on those shadows, um, a bit more fiery, a bit more red. So I'm liking that. Okay, so now let's go to the blue curve and I'm just going to add a control point and start moving it to see what I like. So this is kind of getting cooler if I raise the curve. It's adding more blue in the shadows if I lift that curve down in the left section. So yeah, something like that, I think. So now I can tweak this opacity as well. I'm just going to maybe drop that down a little bit so it's not so intense. And now you can see it's given a real you know, depth to her face, which I really, I really like. Um, the next part I would tackle are the highlights in the image. Um, so I will come over to the luminosity masks and just again go through them and see what's going to work. Um, some of them aren't going to give you any selection because they're going to be, you know, not able to find anything really bright in the image. So there's no point using one of these masks. Um, somewhere around here, I want something just to catch that highlight on her face. Um, so yeah, something. Something like light two is going to work. So I'm going to create a selection, add the curves adjustment, and then come down and name it. Light two. So I'm going to come up into the red curve and I'm going to put a control point more in the highlights area because I, I, I want to kind of affect those highlights. But I need to be gentle because if I pull this up too high, I'm going to brighten this too much and I'm going to blow out the highlights that are on the model's face. You can see she has um, a highlight on her nose, so I need to be mindful of, of not blowing those out. So I'm just going to try the greens now and I'm just going to be subtle, not too strong. And let's have a look in the blues. So now I'm cooling down that highlight. I don't want it to be too cold. So I'm going to bring that back down. Um, I like that. I'm going to come down and group these layers into a folder called color grading. So everything is nice and organized. And you can also now affect the opacity. If you want to reduce the effect even more, I can, you know, soften this whole look. Uh, more. So you have a lot of control um, with creating these luminosity masks. So I'm going to get rid of this palette so you can see. Let's do before and after. So you can see how using these luminosity masks you have so much control over every area in the image. So now the color grading is all done, you're going to want to delete those luminosity masks because they're going to increase the file size quite a lot. 
So if you go into the folder in the actions palette, the last three actions, select those and press play and they will delete those channels. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more photography and retouching videos and have a great day.